Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play sections of an audio file uh, that we've loaded into a P5.js sketch. Now, in P5.js, we have the ability to play audio files uh, such as an MP3. So in this sketch here, I have an MP3 that I've called Chuck and that is the sound of Chuck D from Public Enemy counting to eight. Now I can first just create a variable that I'm going to store the sound file object in. Since I'm working with a sound file object, I'm gonna do function preload, and which I will first load this sound file object into that variable before the sketch actually starts in setup. So that's what preload is. Um, and I'm going to store this audio file into load sound. I'm not going to get into the details of how all this works. I've done other video tutorials that you can check out on that. But now that I've loaded that, I have an object, sound file object called Chuck. And I'm going to use the dot play method to that and we will hear the sound of this audio file one two three four five six seven eight okay now when i say playing sections um instead of playing the full audio file i'm just going to play a part of this audio file so if we go here to the reference this is the p5 sound library reference on p5js.org uh, this is the sound file object which is what we are using to play that mp3 now we saw I used the play method, which will play the sound file. However, if we go and look at the documentation here, um, we can just use the play as is, but there are also some optional arguments that we can pass into play that will allow us to manipulate a few things about this sound file. So the first one is the start time, which means that when we run it, it doesn't have to play immediately. We could um, schedule it to play a little later uh, from when it runs. So for example, if I were to just go in here and put it two, that means it's gonna play two seconds after uh, the sketch opens. So if we play it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you saw there was a little bit of a pause there, a little bit of, space before we actually heard it play. So you can actually schedule when your sound files are going to play. Then we have the rate, which is going to change the sort of the speed uh, at which it plays, which also will affect the pitch that we're not really interested in. The amp will change the volume that we're also not interested in. So just to kind of keep up here, it's going to put a one and one there. So the rate will be one, the amplitude will be one. But these next two are important. So the Q start is at what point in the sound file do we want it to start? So we don't have to start the sound file at the beginning. I could start it um, later on in the sound file. So I could maybe start it like halfway. Um, and then the final one is the duration. How long do we want the sound file to last for? So to give you an example of what this could do, um, to really make this work accurately, we're gonna be using um, a, another method of the sound file, which is the duration, which is going to give us the actual length of the sound file. Okay, so to do that, I would do chuck dot duration, and then it's a method. So open close parentheses. So I'm going to do chuck duration divided by two. So this means um, it's going to start halfway through the audio file there. And then I'm also going to make that the length of it. So what this means is that I'm going to change this back to zero because I want it to start right at the beginning. Um, so this is saying start the audio file at the halfway point of the audio file. So it's going to start halfway through. And since we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it should start at five. So we'll hear five, six, seven, eight. And then this is saying only play uh, 
half. It should only last for half the length of the full audio file, which should work because we are starting it halfway through. So let's hear what this does. Five, six, seven, eight. So there you hear, uh, we're hearing five, six, seven, eight. Now, just to give you another example, if I started at zero, but still only played it for uh, half the duration, we'll hear one, two, three, four, because it, this one, remember, is where we start, and this one is more how long it's going to last. One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, so say I just wanted to do one number, I could change the, this to be one-eighth of the duration. What? Okay, and then now say if I wanted to go through those numbers, instead of zero, I'm going to start at um, this times. If I started at zero, it's still going to give me the one. What? If I did it at two, so this is starting at one-eighth into the audio file two. I times it by two this will be two times uh two eighths through the audio file or a quarter through three and kind of so on four change this four five uh, that would be six. six and then seven seven Eight. If I did eight times eight, that would be basically starting it at the end of the audio file so we wouldn't hear anything. So this is a way that we can kind of play around and manipulate um, our audio file so that we are only playing part of it. Okay. Um, now another thing I want to do is add some visualization to this and actually uh, make it work uh, a little bit more interestingly because it's not really that interesting being able to just play sections if we're not kind of utilizing the graphic and visual elements of P5. So um, what I'm going to do is something I've also done in a previous tutorial, which is looking at this thing called the gets peaks method. I'm just going to get rid of this for now. So I'm going to make a variable called peaks. And peaks, actually, I want to be an empty array. And I'm going to use chuck.get peaks. Now this will, I can kind of specify this is going to give me a array of the volume levels throughout the sound file and I can kind of make it as small or as large as I want, but I'm going to make it this width. So this is going to give me an array of 400 uh, measurements of the volume of the amplitude of the wave file. Uh, I did another tutorial on this, which you can also check out that gets a little more into detail. So now I'm going to visualize this by making a for loop. So that I equals zero, I is less than peaks length and then I plus plus and I'm just going to make a line for each element in the array that's going to be at I on the X axis I'm going to start it in the middle and then it's going to be minus uh, peaks I and I'm going to sort of enlarge it by 200 and then I'm just going to copy this and then add that so that is the visualization of this mp3 audio file of Chuck D counting to eight. So again, you can go back and check a uh, previous tutorial on a bit more into detail about how that works, okay? But what I want to do is actually be able to click different sections of this audio file and have it play that specific section. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw some lines here to kind of visually separate this audio file. So the first thing we need to do that is I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to call just call that W and that is going to be the width divided by eight. And actually what I'm going to do instead of divided by eight, I'm going to do let number of uh, call them clips. So I'm going to do num clips and call that eight just in case I decide to go and maybe change that a little later on. So I'm going to do num clips, which is equal to eight. So now I'm going to do another for loop and I'm going to make an i and then i is going to be less than num clips, which in this case is eight and then i plus plus and then I'm going to make a line and this is going to be a line that starts at 
i times w and then at zero on the y axis and then also i times w and then at the height and I'm going to make this line red duplicate that and then I need to go in here and make sure I keep those lines as black so what I've basically done is if I have this variable called w which is right now one eighth of the width and then I continually multiply that by i, which is going to be 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, and then 4. It's just going to spread it out over 8 lines here. So now this red line is allowing me to divide this into parts. So now the idea is when I click within the boundaries of these red lines, whatever part of the audio file is in there, that's what we're going to hear. So I'm going to go do function mouse press now because I want to click on them with my mouse. Um, I'm going to have to do this again. So with divided by uh, num clips is eight. And so I'm going to do a for loop uh, again. I plus zero, I less than uh, num clips. I plus plus. So now I need to do a conditional statement, which is basically saying if I am between uh, this line and this line, or this line and this line, or this line and this line, um, that something is going to happen. So if mouse x is greater than, and we would do i times w, which would indicate any one of these lines, and and if mouse x is less than i times w, and then we're going to do plus w. So that's basically saying if it's between this line and then one section away from that line, which is this w, which is an eighth of the width, and that's sort of cuts everything into nice even parts there. So if the mouse is in between there, what I want to happen is I want to play that section. So as we discussed before, I'm going to do chuck.play. Now I want it to start immediately, so I'm going to put a zero there. So there's no, I'm not scheduling it for later time. Uh, one for the rate, one for the amp. And then where do I want it to start? So before, when I was playing around up here, you saw me, I was taking chuck dot duration times in this case I'll do num clips which is eight and but it's gonna be times I in this case so depending on which one of these my mouse is in between is going to correspond with the I that this is multiplied by and then for how long do I want it to play since I have eight sections I only want it to play for one eighth of the duration, so I'll just do duration and then divided by num clips. Um, so this num clips is just helpful in case I decide I want to change this number later on and make it four sections or 16 sections or something like that. And so now I'm going to stop, I'm going to rerun it, and if I click here, what? I hear that one. If I click here, oh, undefined. What happened here? Undefined. Uh, oh, this is why. Uh, that was, I did times num clips. I needed to do uh, divided by num clips. One, two, three, 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 four, four. So now when I click five, each section, six, seven, eight, one, 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 two, 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 two four, three, five, five, five. All right, so it kind of created like a little um, sort of sample trigger here uh, where I can just cut up this. Uh, sound file and then I can just click on the different parts of the sound wave and it'll play the different parts so that is basically all there is to it one more thing I could do is I'm gonna just for visual purposes I'm gonna maybe have the background uh, light up a little bit so uh, I is less than and we'll do num clips and then I plus plus this is strictly a visual thing now. I'm going to make a rectangle actually, and I don't want it to have a stroke. And I do want it 
a fill. So maybe let's do like an orange. And then I want this rectangle to happen at I uh, times W and then start at zero. And then I want it to be just one eighth of the width and I want it to go the entire size. Um, and then here, same thing, I need to do this if mouse x is greater than i times w and mouse x is less than i times w plus w. And in this case, I want mouse is pressed. So only if I press the mouse do I want that to happen. And then I just need these for my conditional statement. What? So there you have it. So that now I not only get the sound, but I get a little visual just to kind of. What? I mean, there's different ways you could do it. You could maybe make the lines actually change color uh, or do something else visually just to make it a little more interesting. But that is how we can play sections of an audio file here in P5JS using the, the play method and the optional arguments that are provided.